Good morning, everybody. Victor here from beautiful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Brooke and I had the pleasure of fishing with our good friend Jamie of High Tides, an all-inclusive fishing lodge. This was actually our second time fishing with Jamie. The first trip, Brookie caught her biggest ever rooster fish, and I caught my biggest ever Kubera snapper. Join us as we spend a week fishing the scenic town that is Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. The most nerve-wracking thing for me traveling with rods, because I love bringing rods to wherever we go, fragile stickers everywhere you can. But guess what? We got no broken guides, no broken tips, and they look good. Guacamole y salsa mexica. Cheers! Cheers to a great week in Mexico. Guess what they named this dog? Dexter. After the knives. What's up, Claire? I need to know what I'm bringing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to give you a knife case. That's what I'm doing. He's even got the custom High Tides logo in there. That's a nice looking little lure. If they don't get Rachel, enjoy your dinner. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. What do you have here? So last night we flew into Mexico, Jamie picked us up from the airport and we stayed at the Hacienda Maria Elena. It's the next morning, here we are ready to go fishing, but there's actually a cruise ship right here at the mouth of the bay and the police actually don't let you go past it until the cruise ship's done docking, correct Jamie? Yeah, we need them to dock and sometimes it's annoying that they take half an hour, but, but it seems like we're going. So the unique thing about traveling to areas like Mexico is not just the people, the culture, but also just seeing different things like boats. So when we're in Florida, you know, you see a lot of yellowfin, sea bees, uh, Boston whalers. It is panga country. Everywhere you look, panga, 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 which is a boat you don't really see in the U.S. So it's just unique to see the shift in different boats. Right now we're headed out of the bay, out of Puerto Vallarta. It's a huge tourist location. Um, people come here from all over the world, not just for the fishing, but the nightlife, the food, the culture, and it is just absolutely beautiful. And for us Florida folk, you know, we're so used to the flatness of Florida, it's nice to see some elevation once in a while. We're gonna start with, with a technique we use a lot, slow trolling goggle eyes near, near the structure, near, near shore. We're gonna cast, blind cast mostly. And we're gonna take a look at the birds inside this bay because there's been a lot of sardines. And as, much, as soon as they get active, we're gonna get active also. The best day of rooster fishing I've ever had last year was with Jamie and Olga. Brooke caught, I want to say 65, 70 pound rooster fish on this very boat right here. So you know we're in good hands. So earlier this morning, um, we stopped by, got some goggle eye, the same goggle eye that we have actually in Florida from a local bait fisherman that they spent all night catching. And I just hooked them through the nose. And we are going to slow troll these guys just kind of along the coast. And the way Jamie does it is he actually has a rubber band on the line and he clips the rubber band into the outrigger clip because he likes to fish his reels in free spool clicker. So if he were to fish just the line in there, the goggle eye would be able to pull line and it would go through the clip. But by putting a rubber band there, it kind of stops them in place. So, and we're just kind of trolling around this bay. There's lots of birds, there's lots of activity, but no fish yet. I've just been up at the front kind of casting my popper and stick bait. And just look behind me guys. This is not only beautiful, but epic. I mean, 
Whenever I fish an area like this, whether it's Panama or Mexico, I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park. Very rarely do you see many boats around you. It just feels like such an un tapped fishery. You know, back home we're used to just seeing charter boats and jet skis and everyone just zooming by. This just has that old rustic feeling, almost as if like you're the first fisherman fishing here. First sign of, of the day, jack reveals. But we need to start somewhere. They're on the surface all over. Let's see if Victor can make them react a little. too sleepy Jamie they're not too sleepy <laughs> oh man I looked over in the corner of my eye and I was like there's a school of fish or something there I wasn't sure if it was bait but it's a school of jacks and Jamie said they're probably sleepy but I ran this stick bait right through them and they were on it man we are hooked up first fish in Mexico there's a, a big school of jacks following this jack right here come here baby Hard fighting fish. There we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got Jack Crevel in Florida, but these guys are a little bit of a different body shape. They don't get as big as our jacks, but look, he even has some stripes on them. It's kind of interesting. He's got like a barred pattern and these ones are a lot more tall up and down and a little bit darker than the jacks we have in Florida. They're not as yellow and green. So I just switched my popper to that Pelagic Warrior Gladiator I showed you guys with that big lift. The wind picked up a little bit and poppers don't like short chop. When you get that short chop, it makes your popper kind of skip on top of the water, but that big lift helps keep it centered and just pushing a big wake. And also the rougher it is, I think it's harder for fish to not only see the popper, but hear it. So you want to have something that is really going to make an explosion. So we're making a small run here, running this way along the coast and just looking up and down the beach. Some of these houses are absolutely beautiful. They're all in a hill. I just can't imagine you wake up, have your morning coffee and have this view. There's a house up there that looks like it's straight out of Hogwarts, like a Harry Potter movie, just so surreal. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke and run on our goggle eye on the long bait, guys. We're seeing schools of jacks everywhere here, but in between the jacks, um, there's rooster fish that kind of just swim up and down the coast, and that's why Jamie likes to slow troll these goggle eye, because they're never really sitting in one spot. They'll be in an area, but he says they're not like the jacks where you guys saw in the drone where they're just sitting there in a circle and just doing daisy chains. The rooster fish are a lot more uh, lonesome, and they're almost like pelagic, you know, they're they're constantly roaming the hook pulled. What? Yep, the hook just pulled. Hey right, guys, Jack hooked up on the stick bait. We lost that mystery fish. And there's these schools of Jack that just keep coming up and down the beach. And I just casted my stick bait past them and wham, they nailed it. Jamie says that during a full moon like it is right now, full moon was yesterday, does the rooster fish get way more active in the afternoon and in the evening that they're probably taking a little siesta right now? Oh, he's foul hooked. You see him? He's hooked <laughs> in the belly. Yeah, look at how we hooked him. Woo! That's not good. That's why he was fighting so hard. You're not able to turn their head. I don't care if I'm in Florida or in Mexico. They put up a great fight. See ya. My goodness that got my heart racing you know when you're about to pick your lure out of the water to get it back in the boat that's when this jack decided to eat oh my gosh he ate it so good it is completely down the hatch he's 
it's the biggest one of the day so far. No, 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 it's coming, it's coming towards us. It's running towards the belt. Eat it, eat it, eat it. What is it? Rooster! Get it, Brick! Come on, baby! I think this might be a Sierra, Jamie. They're eating all the baits in the back, man. Holy Woo! hell! Holy hell, they're on that one also. Fish on, we got all the ah! Oh, look, every rod! Oh every my rooster, goodness. Rooster, 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 rooster! <laughs> yeah, baby! We need some arms. I have arms. <laughs> Can you tell what Jamie's favorite fish is? We love that one. We still have two little roosters. Oh, it is a little there. rooster, yep. Maybe rooster, but we found this Come here, baby rooster. Come here. Oh, yeah, look at that. First rooster fish of the trip. I don't like to keep these guys out of the water very long. Get this hook out. Okay, look. Look at how pretty that is. That is what you come to Mexico for. They get much bigger than that, but look at that. He's got his signature little mohawk all lit up. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Pretty sure Brookie has one on too. I'm gonna let this little guy go because I do not like to see them die. So we, we finally have action with the target species. We found roosters. Unfortunately, we can't we can choose the size. We start with small ones and everything is starting to pick up more. There's birds literally all over. We ran a little bit offshore because we noticed there was tons of birds out here. Fish like rooster fish and jacks will push up the bait fish to the surface and then the birds will feed on them. But right now when the birds are just sitting there like lame ducks, the fish aren't really feeding because they're not pushing up the bait. But when you, well, you gotta kind of be near the birds because this is where the bait has last been to know when the next feed is gonna be. It might be 15 minute, 30 minute spurts that they do it in, but you just gotta basically be ready to run and gun with the poppers and the live baits and to kind of just go to where you see the activity is. So we got a big rooster fish on and I, like Jamie was saying, a couple of them came up behind the boat. I was up front casting the uh, popper and stick bait. We're in all this red water. They actually get a pretty crazy red tide over here. I don't think it's as destructive as our red tide back in the States, but it's interesting to see there's like patches of red in all this green and blue water. And we have all the time. I, oh, saw, okay. I saw his fin. Yeah. He looked beautiful. Definitely a lot bigger than the last one. And there were many of them behind the boat also. You, you, you got to see yep. many rooster behind. I love the energy Jamie brings when he knows there's a rooster fish on the end of the line. It's his favorite fish, right? Oh, definitely. They're spectacular. They're, look Ooh. at that. So just nice and easy. Oh, and they're starting to feed out there. I mean, I just saw them under the birds. Yeah? Yeah. Under these white birds there? Yeah. Oh rooster. my gosh. They're so... Only rooster, buddy. Oh, oh big. It's hell. big. It's oh. big. It's big. <laughs> Oh, oh Jamie! <laughs> Big rooster, guys. So we gonna, gonna I can grab them. You want me to grab the rod? Yeah. Okay. Much different fights than the jacks. These rooster fish, they are way more erratic in the direction. Like once a jack gets you pinwheeling, kind of like a tuna, they stay that direction. Rooster fish move a lot more. Look at that. Beauty. There he goes. He sees that boat and he says, uh-uh, I ain't getting near that boat. I don't want to be on YouTube today. fishing baby Jamie putting us on them man what a fish my second biggest rooster fish ever gorgeous gorgeous especially with those tracers there's no other fish like them in the ocean just gorgeous green color incredibly smart aggressive 
and yeah i can't say enough good things about this fish okay so right now we got the boating gear and uh real important i don't like to see these fish die so we just got a few pictures got a little video and just like you would release a tarpon or sailfish or something jamie's got the boat in gear and um we're just letting the water kind of rush past his or her gills Push it down. ready i'm gonna try to release the guys ready Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. swim way perfect. That's what we love to see. So happy. That was a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. I'm shaking inside. That made me happy. We stay. Everyone stay patient. We keep working that same place here, and they got out. Let's see if we can catch more. You know, this is what I love. I love fishing with people who Jamie does this every day, year in and year out. And when you get a captain that still gets excited over a fish that he's caught a million times, I love that. Nothing makes the attitude on the boat better than that. He cares about getting you on the fish, he cares about that fish swimming away, and he wants everyone to have a good time. And that's what I love about high tides fishing. It's always great when you catch a beautiful big fish like that and you take the time to revive it and it swims off beautifully. You couldn't ask for anything better when they swim off so perfect and you know that you can come back here and catch it another day. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, Thank sir. you. My pleasure. My pleasure <laughs> always. So check it out guys, after a long day of fishing, every single night, the chefs here make you a nice home cooked meal. Tonight we got shrimp Diablo, you got like a little spicy tomato sauce, some asparagus, um, mushrooms, onions. Brooke's got a little steak on her plate. I'm waiting on a little steak on mine. And it's like, the details at this lodge, from the time you get up, you're taken care of, you go out, you have a great day of fishing, you come back, sit in the pool, have a little margarita, have a little red wine for dinner. Cheers to you guys at home. And uh, what, better to, what better way to end the day than a beautiful dinner like this? I gotta say, high tides really does it up. The next day, we came back out here. Yesterday, unfortunately, one of Jamie's friends, their engine, electrical issues, they had some issues where they couldn't get their boat to run. So Jamie being the nice guy he is, we towed him back in, but it takes a long time to tow a boat back in. So we left earlier than we wanted to, but the fish were not really biting yesterday, but we're back out here and Jamie's got a new game plan, which he's gonna go over with you right now. Yes, definitely. Yesterday we worked hard. We saw some tunas, but no action. They were cruising. So today we definitely have a different plan. We're going for uh, striped marlin mainly. We have opportunities to catch uh, dorados also, but striped marlin is going to be the goal. We're going to go around the structure we were yesterday, but let's say seven, eight miles further. We're going to fish deeper water and we're going to mainly troll. Dead baits and lure is going to be the plan for today. So check it out. These are the goggle eyes we've been fishing. And it's pretty crazy because back home, nobody really does this that I've seen where you troll goggle eye. Everyone by us, you know, you troll your ballyhoo or your strips, but I guess it's just because this is the most readily bait available. But you guys see, Jamie sewed his mouth shut to prevent water from getting up in there and your bait's not gonna wash out. And he's got that hook right there in the chin. So this thing is just gonna go nice and streamlined and swim like a live goggle eye. Then we got a spread of trolling lures and each lure is gonna do something a little bit different. They got different shaped heads, different length skirts. Some of them are gonna go like this. They go in and out of the water and it's just like a game of cat and mouse trying to really entice that bite. I'm, I'm cutting the bait because it, it, it gives it a real nice action. It makes all the, that back part softer and 
when we put it in the water, it makes a big difference. When we cut it, you're gonna see it go, go almost like a rapala. Okay, Nice one. It's a, a nice one, one Jamie. Big Marley to start it. Woo, baby. I thought it was a striped Marlin. They was playing with it, playing with it, but big old Mahi, we'll take it. <laughs> big dolphin jumping way back in the spread. I love it. We haven't been trolling for 30 minutes and we got a fish on. It feels like a good sized dolphin. We saw him jumping back there. You just see all that green. Beautiful. So right, right now we're blind trolling. We're not really near anything. And unlike the Atlantic where we're from, so we, we, a lot of times we troll by seaweed, sargasm weed. They don't have a sargasm sea, so they have no sargasm weed. But in the summertime, when the rivers really start to flood and flush out and their rainy season starts, there'll be logs and trees and all sorts of other things floating out of here. So a lot of times they'll find mahi on that kind of stuff. But this time of year, it's pretty barren out here. Oh man, I love it. I can see his blue pectoral fins just shining in that water. It's such a pretty fish. What I love about these fish too, you can catch them all around the world. Any warm tropical climate, you're gonna find dolphin. In Japan, in Florida, South America, Central America, all around the Atlantic, these fish roam pelagically worldwide. A little close to the boat right here and Jamie's gonna gaff it any second. Olga's got the boat in gear so that hook doesn't pull. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, first Mexican <laughs> mahi mahi. Look at that. That's a big one right there guys. That is a nice bull, dorado, dolphin, however you want to call it. These fish <laughs> go by many different names. Look at that. Tell me there is not a prettier fish in the ocean. Yellow, blue, green. We got to get a shot of him right now while he's all lit up. All right, guys, there it is. First fish of the day. Gorgeous dorado, mahi-mahi or dolphin, wherever you are in the world. Perfect gaff shot. This fish was so photogenic. We got some underwater shots of him. He was just like, I don't know. He was just meant for YouTube. This was like the most docile dolphin we've ever dealt with. Normally you gaff a dolphin, they go ballistic. This guy stood still for photos, for videos, for a little speech and everything, but absolutely gorgeous. Check it out. This is a bull dolphin and you can tell cause he's got a really blunt head. So you can always tell a cow dolphin from a bull dolphin cause a cow will have a more rounded head and they're usually traveling in pairs. Um, bull dolphin just, seem like they're always a little bit bigger than the cows and look at that absolutely massive dorsal fin hard fighting fish and we were all talking about what of what our uh, bucket list fish are for me my next bucket list fish i want a big 60 plus pound dolphin we just spotted a big flock of birds up ahead and it looks like they're working the water surface they're not just sitting there so there's definitely fish there things are about to get interesting i hope something yep. was it a dolphin was it i thought it was a tuna it looks green i think it's a tuna it's going down Hell yeah, baby. yeah baby it's tough because we're in a moving boat so you try to cast as far as you can and reel as fast as you can so your lure has some action oh no it's a jack Oh man, we can't escape the jacks, Jamie. Uh, 
I saw the two yellow fins and I thought it was a yellow fin. Action is action. I love catching fish no matter what it is. Here's the pliers. Ate the stick bait. Adios muchacho. So this is actually our third day of fishing with high tides and we're all kind of feeling a little beat up. So you know what? We're gonna call it an early day. Trolled for a few hours, got one dolphin. That's what the ocean gave us today. So we're gonna reel them in. We'll see you guys back in the city in beautiful Puerto Vallarta. So just came back into the kind of like little bay area of Puerto Vallarta, headed back to the dock. And look, we got, as Jamie said, little mahi next to his, well, not so little mahi next to his brother right there. And you know, I had to bring Jamie some Dexter knives, which you guys can find linked below. And you can actually save 20% off these micro land shark. So I'm gonna start right here by the mahi's tail. And I'm gonna work my way up this mahi from the tail half to the head half. Just working on the spine. So Jamie actually has a really, really good dolphin fishery. Um, not so much this time of year, but I remember a few months ago, he was sending me pictures and they were catching dolphin like this size all day long. Stick baits, lures, trolling, all sorts of different type of stuff. But he says that they just haven't really been around lately. Um, but they have an incredible dolphin fishery over here in Mexico. And especially when it comes to size, like they catch dolphin like this is like a, I wouldn't say average size, but slightly above average. They don't get the tiny dolphin that we get back home. Just made a cut right here by the head. Look at all that head meat. I'm gonna tilt the tip of my knife down. Mahi have a huge, huge backbone. So if you don't do this, you're gonna miss a lot of meat on the other side of their backbone. You see that? It's really raised, so I really like to get my knife down on the other side. Break through the pin bones. And I try to avoid getting in that stomach because dolphin, I don't know if it's because they're the fastest growing fish in the ocean, which if you guys didn't know that, they actually are. A dolphin like this, few months old. You could get a 50 pound dolphin and it'd only be two years old. But they got some, out of like all the fish species, I would say they have some of the nastiest guts. So try to avoid them at all costs. But look at that. Look at that gorgeous slab of meat. It's actually really frowned down upon to um, fillet fish and skin them at the dock. They don't really like carcasses here. They actually do have crocodiles. I don't know if it's crocodiles or alligators in the marina. So I don't think they want to attract that. Look at that. So we got our dolphin all skinned out. I'll see you guys back at the Hacienda. I know Chef's going to make a good dinner. We'll see you guys there. First time you guys are seeing the Hacienda and it is absolutely beautiful here. So we'll so drop off the fish to the chef. Hola. 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 Se fue So every night when we get to the lodge, they usually have like a little appetizer ready for us. And then check this out. You guys know how much I love food. I've never really dabbled with beets. We got a beet salad with like a little pineapple dressing, goat cheese, and then just some mixed greens. And let me tell you what, this combination of flavors is amazing. Um, Karen is the chef tonight, and she actually just prepared a ceviche for Brooks video, which you guys can find linked below with the Sierra mackerel that she caught. This place is nothing short of amazing. The lodge, beautiful. I mean, we're on this hill. There's a river in the background. You got the beach just on the other side. And then the food here, incredible. You guys come on in the kitchen. We got 
Chef Karen, she's right there. And check this out. She's whipping up the mahi right here. She's got it in a pan. I smell some garlic, I smell onion, I smell butter. Looking and smelling delicious. Some lemon juice, lime juice. I tried this earlier. I don't know what it is, but it's like rolled up beef that she sliced for me. It was good. Very slowly. Okay, slowly. Oh, some camarones too. She's got some garlic oil in a pan right there. And some camarones, which is shrimp in Spanish. This is Vic's dream right here. To never ever have to cook on an electric stovetop ever again. Once you go gas, you'll never go back. Six burners. You know what I could do with six burners? I never have to overcrowd a pan ever again. That's what I could do. How do you say butter again? Mantequilla. Mantequilla. I love mantequilla. Is that mashed potatoes? Papas? Papas. Pure de papa. Wow. So she's plating right now. She's got some mashed potatoes on the plate, some baby carrots. Broccoli. Look at look at that presentation. Karen is an artist in the kitchen, huh? She just covered the uh, the pan with the shrimp. Okay, flipping the mahi. Look at how tender that fish is, guys. It does not get fresher than that. Day caught mahi being cooked tonight. Force at the hacienda. That's what I love about this place. Is so when Jamie picked us up from the airport, the second you get here. You don't have to worry about driving. You don't have to worry about your food. That's the nice thing about an all-inclusive fishing lodge is as soon as you leave the airport and you get here, you don't have to worry about anything. It's just like the biggest peace of mind. There's multiple clients who stay here. It's not just an all-inclusive fishing lodge, but you can stay here just if you want to visit Puerto Vallarta. And that's another client's dinner. We're going to have fish. And then they got the shrimp, carrots, broccoli, mashed potatoes. It looks amazing. Tony was bringing it to the other clients right there, but that looked amazing. Um, I know our dinner is going to be good, but that looked really good too. <laughs> the mahi that she has in the pan, she just put a little silver platter on top, and she took this um, in the fridge. She had like a little guajillo base. It looked like some type of oil, garlic, and guajillo chili, and she put it in the pan, and it's kind of just rendering down. And I. I the mahi mahi with the guajillo chili butter. Now she's drizzling the plate with a little balsamic glaze. That is a not only beautiful plate, you know this is gonna be amazing. When Jamie invited us back, I was beyond happy that we got the invitation to come back here. If someone's gonna invite you out here like Jamie did, show us this a good time. I wanna do as much for him and his resort as possible. I mean, look at this plate. First taste of Mexican mahi mahi. <laughs> That, what, I love chili, and guajillo chili is not a very spicy chili. It's just all, it's super flavorful, like really smoky. So let's see. Mm. Very good. It's, a, it's not good, it's incredible. Incredible. I mean, mahi is such a good fish that it really speaks for itself. Gracias, thank you. But she, she sauteed it, and then she put in this guajillo chili butter with garlic. So you get so many different flavors. 
a super flaky piece of mahi. You get a little balsamic glaze. And then to clean your palate, this little like avocado cilantro dressing, very good. It's absolutely delicious. Every single thing that we have had so far has been amazing. I love the fact that you can fish all day long, come home, and not have to worry about cooking, and then get served this. It's amazing. Your fresh catch is just great. <laughs> yeah. I think we got to say a cheers to Jamie, Olga, and everyone at High Tides. Thank you guys so much. Definitely cheers. thanks to you guys. And cheers to you guys at home. We still got two more days of fishing. Hopefully we got some more videos coming for you. We're gonna go ahead and enjoy this fresh fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have all of High Tides Fishing information linked below, as well as the Hacienda if you're just in the area, wanna visit Puerto Vallarta and aren't interested in fishing, but just want a really cool vacation. I like this city because it's got a small coastal town feel, but you still have all the necessities of a big town. But it has that small town feel, which is really nice. It's not like a super touristy Cabo or the other parts of Mexico people go to. This is like a nice mom and pop coastal town. You kind of get, get my drift, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.